Welcome back. It's time for our Thursday Health Report. And joining us now is Africa 54 Health correspondent, Lino Mudu, with a look at iron and pregnant women. Hello, Lino. Hello, Vincent. Well, new research shows iron supplements are good for pregnant women. The research led by scientists at the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine was conducted in Kenya and looked at 470 pregnant women. 60% of the women were anemic at the beginning. They say extra iron given to half of those women increased the duration of their pregnancies and the weight of their newborns. In addition, resulted in no significant differences in overall maternal malaria infection risk. The study was published in the Journal of American Medical Association. A United Nations interagency group says global mortality rates for children under five has fallen by more than 50% since 1990. That year, 12.7 million children under five died from largely preventable diseases, as opposed to the UN says 5.9 million in 2015. This is the first year the figure has gone below the 6 million mark. A levels and Trends in Child Mortality Report 2015, released by partner agencies including UNICEF and the World Bank Group, indicate that although the global progress has been substantial, well, 16,000 children under five still die every day. Children are most at risk during the first month of life when 45% of all under five deaths happen. Despite the huge success, the group's report says most countries still missed the MDG target of reducing child mortality by two-thirds. Now, outdoor air pollution kills 3.7 million people per year worldwide, according to the World Health Organization. The key to controlling the problem is knowing where it comes from. But that information is all but absent in much of the developing world. So the United Nations Environment Program is launching a low-cost tool to help officials keep watch over the air in their cities. VOA's Steve Baragona has more from Nairobi, Kenya. Tabitha Wangeshi suffers from asthma, but with the little money she makes selling charcoal, she can't always afford the medicine to treat it. My chest is always blocked, like my ribs are dried up. From there I start breathing heavily. I run out of oxygen, then I start breathing heavily. Across town at Kenyatta National Hospital, Dr. Ndambuki Mboloi says there is one factor causing breathing problems all over Nairobi. Air pollution is a big problem within the city. The city's dirty vehicles and notorious traffic are the leading source of dangerous gases and particles in the air. Mboloi says the toxic haze that shrouds Nairobi raises rates of asthma, heart disease, lung disease, and airway infections. By judging with the number of patients that we see who present with the respiratory problems, it may be getting worse. So all over the developing world, cities are growing fast, and with them, the traffic, and with the traffic, the pollution. And we know it's bad, but we don't know how bad it is because no one's been checking. Experts say there is very little data on air pollution and its consequences in the cities of Africa, or much of the developing world. But the UN Environment Program hopes to change that with this little box. The technology that we are launching today is a way to measure that very accurately and very cheaply. These little boxes measure all the major air pollutants for about 100 times less than the typical monitor. McLade says cities can build an effective network of monitors at a price they can afford. And they're able then to do the apportionment to find out the source of the, tra of the pollution and then act on that. So policies can target a city's biggest problems, whether it's burning trash or industrial pollution or emissions from dirty vehicles. And the world's rapidly growing cities can have the information they need to control pollution that each year kills millions and harms millions more. Steve Barragona, VOA News, Nairobi. And that's our Africa 54 Health Report for today. Vincent? Well, you know, thanks a lot. Uh, be sure to watch Lino Mudu every Tuesday and Thursday for the latest health news in Africa right here on Africa 54.